Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmah, Shai Bashim Rakak Wadash. And double honors to that apostles of the great no stone that taught me this truth, and as well as the bishops on down, Yahweh Bashmah, Shai Brakatham, to the elect, which is 140 and 4,000, and including the one third. And um, I just want to get into some news here, as what this is saying at the Guardian. And this reads, UK terror threat leveled on the close review at the foiled alleged attacks plot in Europe, which they're saying is under very close, which means it's likely that there could be an attack somewhere in England. And I'm going to speak up against what's in this article and explain why, you know, I, um, I see this as you know, another one of those false flag attacks, man. This reads, Britain's terror threat level is being kept on the very close amid concerns that extremist groups could target Jewish institutions in the UK a day after German prosecutors said they had foiled on a mass attack plot by making four arrests. The MI5 and counter-terror police indicated they were focused on whether the war in the East could galvanize extremists into taking violent action, as Israel's intense bombing of Gaza extends to its third month. The UK terror threat is now judged to be at around its lowest level since 2006 when the current rating system was introduced. It is formally rated as substantial, the third of five tears, meaning an attack is considered likely. So what I'm going to say about this is that well, one, we live in the most surveillance time ever. Okay, you have countries around the world that are more surveilled than other countries, but let's just deal with England to be exact. England is one of the most important countries in the world, right along with Israel and America. So these areas are going to be highly surveillance and the security is going to be great. Okay, so we know this. That no person is going to do anything on a terroristic level just out of the blue. Nah, like, that's not going to be the case. Like, what's usually going to happen is, is there's going to be people at the very top in government that are going to know that something great is going to come before it even happens. This has always been the case throughout the times past. I mean, let's look at what happened in October the 7th, okay, where you had a lot of those um, Amalekites that have died in the thousands, as they put it. And um, we know by now, as we fast forward from that time to onwards, we know by now that what, as of what really happened on October the 7th, not what the narrative um, spewed out there, but what really happened. And I'm not going to go into detail because they might take the video down. So I'm not going to go there. But I'm just saying, again, we know what really went down over there. Okay. And as well as I will mention in saying in this as well, the Israeli politicians and as well as the American politicians and just people um, around the world that are a part of the elite construct, they knew that this was coming. They knew that that event was going to come before it came. And there's, there's information on that, a lot of information on that. So I'm not just saying that, just, I, just I, you know, speaking on the side of my neck, like, like we're researchers over here. <laughs> like why you, why you think we <laughs> were able to read news articles and, and go into various information because we're researchers. Okay, so we've researched the information and that's why we can talk about that. This, there's there's a various of, of witnesses that can that have um brought that information to the forefront. So again, if there's anything on a great scale which it involves killing people, that will happen. Nine times out of ten, highly likely it was already known that it was gonna happen among the powers that be. Okay, because no one on an average level is gonna do something on a great scale to kill a mass amount of people under a surveillance state or not even just the state, but a surveillance globe. Okay. So yeah, 
let's move on forward and let's go and read the book of Sirach 5 and verse 15. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. Let's also read 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So now we have the advantage over Satan and his counterparts because we know what he's all about. We've researched them. We've recognized them first through the spirit of this Bible. So now it's very clear as to what this devil is going to do and what he's not going to do. Okay? Because whatever this devil is going to do, it's, it was already written. Before he was going to do it, the Most High already put it in his mind, the information, the instruction in his mind to do what he's going to do. So whatever he does, we're going to already know about it as the prophets have always have known. They've always known the secrets of the Lord. Go back to the book of Daniel chapter two, as well as it reads that the Lord do of nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. So we're going to get the inside scoop. All right. And one thing that we do know about this devil is that this devil is full of his tricks. Or you can call it his magic tricks. That only works if you're unaware of his magic tricks. OK, and Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right. So whatever tricks or magic tricks that this devil pulls off. It no longer becomes magic. It no longer becomes a trick because we see the trick being performed. OK. So we have the advantage over this devil because we are not ignorant of anything as it is written that we've been blessed with an unction to know all things. The term unction just means to be anointed as well as the prophets received the secret things of what was to come. So when these things do come. Then it's the word of the Lord coming to pass. It's a prophecy. OK, and we know that prophecy will play out, which will include the ending of the civilization. Oh, yeah. OK, so all of this stuff that's going on around the world, you know, I mean, is it surprising to a degree? You could say so. But it's not to the point where it's like, whoa, you know, we know that there's going to be event after after event after event for the ending of this world. And that's the nuclear destruction, the third world, which is going to come quickly. All right. So that's what it's going to be about. That's what it's going to be about. All right. So now let's even go forward. And let's read something else. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to read anything else. I want to show this video to you of this individual. Joe Wilson. Debated. Then I don't know why it's playing. I didn't even press play. Let's go back and, and play this video the right kind of way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over 110 times, I have warned that the global war on terrorism is not over. With appeasement in Afghanistan leading to terrorist attacks on American families with Biden open borders. The threat is clear. We see the shocking number of trained, well-financed mass murderers invading America. This has reached this year 169. Ukraine was invaded. So now we got to look out for 169 mass murderers. So that's supposed to be alarming to you when he says this. So you got to pay close attention to the words that these devils speak. Because they're posing a narrative and they're telling you really what they're telling you is that they're going to pull some major stunt out there. Or it could be various of stunts that they're going to pull. Invaded. Then... Israel invaded. Now America invaded. So he's How's saying that Ukraine was invaded. Now America's invaded and Israel was invaded. Salaki, so he said Ukraine was invaded, Israel was invaded, now America's invaded. Really what he should have said was is he should have said this, because Israel is the most secured state in the world. So if Israel has been invaded by the hate group, then that means... No place else on the earth is safe. That would have been more of a powerful statement if you're going to lie properly. Because <laughs> that's all these politicians do. These politicians, they paid a lot of post narratives out there because there's an agenda at large. And I mean, 
Sure enough, I mean, when we go back some weeks ago, King Charles III gave an order. Once again at the COP28 meeting. While he gave his speech and then he also gave another speech indoors and gave the order that the insiders are going to have to move with urgency to forward their agenda of the climate change. And we know what the term climate change really represents. Okay. And that's why you, 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 this is, this is the reason why I'm reading these articles and I'm showing you this guy saying whatever he's saying, because really what they're telling you is they're about to do something out here. Let's keep playing some more of this. House Republicans addressed at the border early this year with the Secure Borders Act blocked by Senate Democrats. It promotes restarting wall construction, advancing technology, adding border patrol, ending catch and release, and reversing executive authorities. Each congressional office has a rally point in the event of an attack, and I urge all families to plan a rally point. Communications may be disrupted, and every family member should know where to go for safety together before the roads are closed. In conclusion, God bless our troops who successfully protected America for 20 years. It's sadly clear there will be more 9-11 attacks across... But then he mentions that there's going to be, what is it? Disruptive communications. So what I take to that is, is it going to be somewhat of a cyber attack? That's just my personal take on that. And then he's now saying that there's going to be 9-11-like attacks across America. So again, these are words to be highly considered by a politician, which I believe he's a Democratic politician, which he served from 85 to 2001, 16 years in. But he's still obviously in that kind of space. So yeah, um, once again, man, I mean, I can't really say any more about this video and as well as the article. I mean, it's very clear that they're saying what they're saying because they're about to do something and they're preparing our hearts for what they're going to do. As well as I even said in my last video that um they're going to have to pull some kind of stunt, a great stunt or or various, a, a, a various amount of stunts. Because ultimately the world is beginning to wake up and they're placing the blame on the people where it belongs. The Zionist Amalekites to be exact which they've been the main ones causing all these issues around the world. And um, people, again, are beginning to find this out, which is very scary to them. So they got to do something. Okay, they don't really have a choice. Whether they want to do it or not, they have no choice. Um, so now, let's even read this article. This is from the ZeroHedge.com. Um, uh, U.S. terrorists since 2 million people, nearly doubling in six years. The federal government terrorist watch list has, has hit approximately 2 million people worldwide and includes thousands of American CBS News report. This revelation derived from an extensive review of court records, government documents, and interviews with intelligent community leaders paints a complex picture of national security measures and civil liberties. The terrorist screening data set is consolidated watch list of individuals deemed as known or suspected. Terrorists has seen a dramatic increase in numbers, launched in 2003 with approximately 120,000 individuals. It ballooned to 1.6 million individuals by 2017. As of the end of 23, this figure has reached an astonishing 2 million, including as we noted, thousands of Americans, and I rem and I remember going back to the time when Obama was in office. You had um um thousands of people that were listed to be killed. So as this article is saying, is is actually um hit up to two million people, and you better believe you me when the time permits, when there is a psychological operation, as they're going to call it, a terrorist attack by some kind of Islamic group. Who are they going to blame this on as well? Who, who are they going to associate this terrorism with? These various groups that don't agree with government. Whether it's these, you know, gun-toting, you know, Christian believing, these, um you know, amendment gun-toting Christian believers, and as well as, of course, our group. 
All right. And we're the main group they really want to get rid of because we represent another world and we're telling them that their world is coming that of an end. And that's what's scary to them. They want to seek to get rid of the prophets. But in trying to do that, they're going to get reproved. As it reads in the book of Psalms 104, I'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture, but it says that do, do my prophets no harm and I reprove of kings for their sakes. So when they get to making that move, when the intention is going to be made clear in the eyes of the Lord, when they make that move, then the right hand is going to make it smooth. That's why this is reads, as I'm going to read in the book of, uh, what is it, Isaiah 59 and uh, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood and the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, shall lift up a standard against them. So you're going to have brothers that are going to be gifted with spiritual power when the enemy comes in like a flood, as it reads in the book of Proverbs 28, verse 15, as a roaring lion and as a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. And he's going to show that. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he know that he had but a short time. And I mean, legislation has been passed that they can take ownership of all of your resources, including your house, your car, and take you to a, a nearby concentration camp somewhere. Or they might even just uh, seek to kill you right in your house because they're going to come with the spirit of urgency, okay? I just read it to you, Revelation 12 and 12. So the ones of us um, are going to be saved out of this. The ones of us are going to be saved having to be endowed with spiritual power because they can't take all of us out, can they? Now, now it's written that the ones of us will be casted into prison and we're going to be tried even unto death. And in that, we're going to receive the crown of life. And it explains how we're going to die in Revelations, the 20th chapter that, um, as John the Revelator put it, that he saw the souls of them that were beheaded because they didn't receive the mark, whether in the right hand or in their forehead or just the mark, period. All right. So that's written. That's going to come to pass. But just as it reads in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Where it reads, um, Matthew 5 and 12, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And what is the great reward? The kingdom of heaven. Let's read this. Uh, Matthew 5 and 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. So the elect some of us are going to be saved in various ways, and the ones of us are going to be saved through death. And through death, will we be resurrected? So it may seem as though it's going to be a time of doom, a time of despair. But guess what? That's going to be the beginning of the elect awakening to everlasting life, as well as Jehovah Shai um, conquered death on the cross. And now he's what? Going to come back having great power. He's going to come back as an angelic force as it is written that he will not meet Esau as a man. Okay? And he's going to come and tread the wine fat. So the Lord is coming with great power and great glory. And just to go back before that even happened, he had to die on the cross. So the same thing is going to ha have to happen with some of us. Some of us are going to have to die for this thing. But in that, we're going to what? Be risen to glory. We are also going to be endowed with power. The ones of us that die. Just like the ones of us that are going to be saved. All right? So the elect have a whole lot to look forward to. Our future is set and bright. All right? So, um, yeah, man. Let me go and read another precept here. Let me see if I could read. Yeah, Psalms uh, 68 in verse. In verse 19, this reads, Blessed be the Lord who daily load of us with benefits, even the most high of our salvation. 
And he that is our power is the power of salvation and unto the most high, the Lord belong of the issues from death. So the Lord is able to deliver and as well as he's able to put the death. So if it's, if, if it's in the will of the Lord for you to be put to death, you're going to be put to death. If it's in the Lord for you not to be put to death and for you to be saved, you will be saved. So that's what we got to believe. And we got to believe that Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to save us regardless. Okay. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, their intention is going to be very clear to seek to kill you. But if it's not in the father's will for that to be done, that's not going to be done. Because miracles will be wrought in these last days. And just like I mentioned, um, you know, yeah, the ones of us are going to die. But just to apply the balance still, that the ones of us are going to witness some kind of salvation. Okay? Because mir miracles will be wrought in these days and times, man. And my thinking is, is that they're going to have to use the, the AI to kind of, um, you know, search out as they deem to be terrorists rather than setting down the troops. I mean, we don't really know how they're going to play this thing out, but Esau is going to move, have a great wrath. And in that, some of us are going to be saved with spiritual power, man. Okay. Cause they're not going to take us all out, but we just know going back to the point that these devils are going to have to stage something to get the ball rolling so that they can forward their agenda, which is their new world order. And, and um, make sure that everybody is chipped, which is the ultimate goal of the bankers and the rest of the, the powerful families that be. All right. So um, that's all I have to say with this. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashem Al Shai Bashem Rakak Badashim. With that, I am out. Shalom.